where I got off was not being obedient to what God was asking me to do versus my own assertion of the system of the situation and my own stepping in. And this includes, you know, first and foremost, my family, who I absolutely love and adore. Um, but I have had to, you know, reconcile many things in the last four years in particular about what I know and what I don't know and my own rebellion and my own arrogance about, you know, the ability to truly rest in God and trust in him. And when I am truly trusting in him versus taking things into my own hands and, uh, you know, Unfortunately, I've had to have a lot of repentance and that's also the Christianese um, that, you know, you see those guys out on the street saying, repent, repent, you know, Christ is coming soon. And it's like on these movies and I saw it all the time and I'm absolutely need to be careful here that I'm not mocking because I also have been a mocker. I've been a scoffer and I don't want to do anything anymore because the point that we're in with the spiritual warfare, yes, I do think it's important to search your own heart and, um, you know, turn away from things that are keeping you from God's presence. And to, if that means going around trying to save the world and save everyone else, you got to look at that and you got to see, is God asking you to do that? Or is that you doing that? And if that is you doing that, I hate to tell you something, you're not helping. Okay, and that's putting it mildly, you might actually be making a lot of things worse. Okay, and you're gonna have to face that. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this song, like a boomerang. Um, I played it last week, but I'm gonna go ahead and play it again, because I'm really wanting to clear the air for myself and for other people right now. And I truly believe music can do this, especially and maybe only if that's the intention that's gone in and the intention, intention for this song was very much about healing family bloodlines. Like a boomerang, I'm going to play it for you. And then afterwards, we'll talk in depth about it. Um, I want to remind you about active listening, because I think it's an important reminder. And I am an annoying music teacher. Uh, this is what I'm paid to do is to continually bring up the things that we all know we should be doing, but they're easier said than done. And so having somebody being annoyingly um, repetitive with it is part about, you know, I'm doing this. Well, am I once again, just trying to help people and it's coming from my own place? I'm not sure. I actually don't think so. So I'm going to say it again. When you're listening to this, it's about what? Four minutes and 17 seconds. That's four minutes and 17 seconds to practice active listening. You're listening to, um, you know, sort of take every thought captive. So you're listening to the music and it doesn't matter if you like the music or not, you can get to a place where you're outside of the judgment. You can let those judgments even be there, right? But this is a place beyond it where you're listening from. You want to be embodied. So how does it make your body feel? How does your body feel? How does it, are you sitting? Are you laying down? You know, become very aware of your body because this isn't about floating off into a fantasy mental place. That's more of an astral. Like we want you to be embodied, so you're feeling your pulse, you're, you know, there's different, you're, you're paying attention to your breath, right? All these kinds of things to make yourself in your body. Anytime your mind floats off, you just easily bring it back to the music because the music is your focus for this moment. And then for those of you that are a bit more music minded, go ahead and try to listen to the instrumentation. You can go ahead and let the analytical brain get busy. Um, analyzing and doing things. And this is maybe one of the ways that I've learned in particular to connect the right and the left hemisphere of your brain is to go ahead and let that left brain get busy with something. And then your right brain can be a little bit more free. Um, you know, the imagination can sort of be there in a presence that doesn't need to, you know, float off into this or that it can sort of be more of a, an awareness. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, or that's what you're hoping to experience on this four minutes and 17 seconds of Like a Boomerang, an original song by Lendl Duskian. <laughs>
Let's talk about it. This song was a song that I wrote because I really did spend about 20 years away from my family, away from my hometown, traveling, getting to do my own thing. And it felt really like such a wonderful privilege to get to do that as a woman. I know I'm not going to get all into feminist stuff because I think it's been so co-opted and twisted. But compared to like 100 years ago, the freedoms that I afforded as a woman to to just get out and just be able to focus on my own creativity and developing my own passions and contributing to society in a way that I felt really good about, um, getting to travel, getting to spend um, time really, really more than anything. It was about my my journey with the divine, right? Like me knowing that I wanted to heal myself and come closer to God. And I got to do that. And it was fantastic. And I needed to be away from everyone to do that because I had always been 
codependent with them, even though I didn't really have the words for it. I'd always felt very, very responsible, very compassionate, so much love for the people around me and my family in particular, whether they asked me for that or not, um, whether that was trauma based or not is not the focus of this particular podcast. But what is true is that when COVID hit, I was forced to start coming back into that world. And in reality, I didn't mind it. Okay. I mean, with COVID, I think many of us started to really wonder about our lives of isolation or, you know, wonder about relationships. If we had gotten to really focus on our careers, it started to make us wonder if like maybe there was a side to life that we had been neglecting. And, and for me in particular, the uh, James Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People talks about this, that there's dependence independence and interdependence and by the time I had come home the last four years it was clear that I was having a hard time going from independence to interdependence and that I did actually really want it okay so I wanted to be home and that's what this song was about it was my hope that coming home and spending time with these relationships would um, I would be able to heal family bloodlines and it wasn't about like I mean, I think many people translate this idea of healing bloodlines into like you having kids that are healed of the traumas of your family, right? But I don't necessarily because I don't have kids. I've never translated that. It's more of a spiritual place. And I also think there's a lot more about DNA that's true than just passing it on through biological means, right? Like I think there's evidence of there being like a non-local aspects, like when you get into particle physics and you separate two particles and one spins this way and, uh, and the, another could be light years away and it spins the other way. Like there's non-local connection, right? Um, I think DNA can be like that with family members. So if one family member is able to break free of some of this programming, some of this trauma, maybe even intergenerational curses, you know, maybe even sin patterns that have been passed down you know, longer than seven generations, like who knows, right? There's so many, that's such a huge topic. But one person breaking through can actually work horizontally, go backwards in time and goes forwards in time. This is, I think that it's beyond time, this work that is healing your bloodline. Something I've been focused on for a long time and coming home felt like an opportunity to do that because now I was smack dab in the middle of these patterns again. I myself was being pulled back into these patterns again. And what was interesting is that when I was out, I spent so much time away that I felt free of a lot of that, right? But then it was interesting to see myself back with these people and just, it was like I was controlled again. These programs came right back so deep and I was right back into certain patterns. Um, but then on top of that, I also was forced to recognize that even when I had been out in the world, I had been attracting people and scenarios. This energy was still there, right? I was still recreating it and setting it up even with people who were not from my family. So it's time to face this stuff, time to heal it. And that's what this song like a boomerang is about. And I was very optimistic <laughs> at the time and I felt ready for it. Right. But I will tell you, it has been very, very challenging and I don't know if I'm over with it. I don't know where I'm at these days, but I am recognizing that I'm in a place that I have transcended a lot of things. And this last year in particular has been huge. It has been difficult. It has been grueling at times, but I, but I will say that, um, part of what's, you know, part of it has been, you know, just resting in the Lord and doing the work every day and, and facing everything every day and absolute prayer work, you know, deep, deep, deep prayer work. And at the end of the day, recognizing that there was a level of disobedience going on with me, that I was putting my family as a counterfeit God, that I was sometimes more afraid of my family than I was of God, that I was, um, sometimes worshiping my family or the idea of my family more than what God's will is for my life. And that's hard to face when you're saying you're, you know, a follower of a Jesus for a long time. And then you have to face these areas of your life where you've said, yeah, but not this, this is actually more important. Yeah. You know, I'm saying it here and sure here, but don't touch this. I'm going to handle this. Those are some of the areas that I've had to be honest. And my family's been one of them. 
So that's what this song, Like a Boomerang, is about. And it's been interesting because the symbolism works on a million different levels. I cannot tell you. I wrote the song four years ago from one place. Then I did the video. Oh, I, I worked on the production of it. And I was in another place. And then now I did the video, released it a few weeks ago. And I'm in another place from there. And the symbolism is so rich and so deep. So... It's hard for me to even, I mean, that to me is a good song. There's a depth here and I don't want to say too much where I'm coming from with it. I more want to encourage you to check out the video and the song for yourself and see that if it can bring a level of clarity to the situation that you're in. But I will say that being with your family and doing this work can bring a level of humility and and I'm very thankful for that. 